higher than I was suspected to be. That is awful. Oh wow, that's pretty shaking for me, yeah. I never thought about the numbers. One in 12 young people deliberately self-harm, causing 25,000 people each year to be hospitalised. A staggering 6,700 people completed suicide last year alone. When I first heard these statistics, they shot me so much into creating this documentary, which aims to raise awareness for the issue. So you are someone that has attempted suicide. So what do you think led you down that road? Well, I've had many problems in the past, and two of them have topped it up to make, make me attempt suicide a few times. The main one, ones were family problems and a past relationship. Could you try and explain to me what a normal day would be like from morning to night? About two years ago, I had food done in my bank and my parents thought it was me that took the money out and they were blaming me for many bad reasons which was proven to be untrue and so one day I just thought I'm just going to take these tablets and you know, attempt it but then I woke up and nothing happened so I just sat on the bed thinking why is it not working? Why should I live? How did your friends treat you during that time? They were treating me fine, to be honest, but I don't have many friends, to be honest. Like, I'd rather sit at home all day on my own, playing on the PlayStation, trying to kill stress. I used to go to the shop, buy alcohol, thinking that's going to help, but it just only makes you feel good for a few hours. So. You just got to hold on to something and continue life. Did you receive any help through your suicidal thoughts? Not really, because I didn't tell anybody. I think that could be my problem. If you were to receive help, who would you ask and what would you say? Because I'm not used to getting help. In a, in a good and bad way. I'm not used to getting help, so... If someone actually said that proved that they could help me, I would have got it back then and wouldn't have uh, attempted these mistakes of suicide. Jamie took his own life on the 11th of April 2015. He had no history of any disorders of the mind. Four days after Jamie's passing, I was handed an envelope of money, £218 by a Jamie's school friends who had a whip round as they did not know what else to do. Therefore, we looked into setting up a charity for this money and would use the money to help with inspiring projects that would help any young people. Jamie was an exceptionally inspiring young man with many talents and had the ability to make many people laugh. Jamie had run from Birmingham to London via the Grand Union Canal with Bexley and Irith Technical High School in Year 7. We decided we would walk the route from London to Birmingham over five days to raise money. After a few months of organisation and fundraising, we completed the walk on the 28th of August, just after his 17th birthday. And to date, we have raised over £12,600 for the charity, Young Minds. Jamie was outwardly a very confident and happy person. He had a secure and happy childhood and was both academically clever and talented with music and art. He never had a problem making friends and was always very popular with boys and girls. Jamie was well loved and cared for by myself, his sister, brother and extended family. 
We never had any reason to believe his brain was not functioning correctly. The charity has helped me personally to focus on something positive and to know that there must be a good reason for Jamie's untimely and traumatic passing. That by people talking about what happened to a lovely young man, which was so tragic, will help others be aware that our young people often need help. It isn't always about what they achieve or what can be measured, but how content and happy they are in life. Jamie was 16 years and 8 months when he died. He was in year 12. Samaritans is quite unique in that we offer a 24 hour a day uh, service on the telephone uh, so people can call us confidentially about whatever's on their mind. It's an anonymous service, uh, it's also non-judgmental um, which means that we'll listen to anybody talk about whatever's going on in their life and that might be thoughts of suicide or self-harm but, but it could also just be people having a bad day and wanting to offload to a complete stranger. So uh, how many calls would you receive in a day? Well, it's estimated that Samaritans nationally take a call every six seconds, so it's a, a lot of calls. Um, I don't think there is a sort of an average day for calls, but our phones, you know, are often often busy. In 2013, 78% of suicide was male, um, and suicide is the biggest single killer of men aged between 20 and 45 years. I think some people might think it was road traffic accidents, or substance overdose, or homicide, or violence, but it isn't, it's actually suicide, and 12 men today will end their life by suicide, which is one every two hours, which is quite a shocking statistic. So, what sort of help do you do here at the Samaritans? I mean, the great thing about Samaritans is it is a universal service. That means we listen to anyone of any age, of any background, male, female, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you've been through or what life's done to you or you know, what you're encountering. You've got a safe space where you can actually offload to another person. If you've been affected by any of the issues covered in this documentary, then uh, please feel free to call Samaritans. The call is free on 116 123 or email joe, that's j-o, at samaritans.org.